Welcome to Excel 2010 Statistics video number 91. Hey, if you want to download this workbook uh, for chapter 14, click on the link below the video. Hey, this is our linear regression video number 5. We've got to talk about coefficient of determination, a measure for the goodness of fit of the observed values to our estimated regression line. Sometimes a picture tells a thousand words. Now here's a bunch of uh, calculations. We're going to make something called sum of the squares due to error, sum of the squares due to regression, and total sum of the squares. And we will see that when we divide the sum of the squares of regression by the sum of total uh, squares of all the variation, we get a measure called r squared, or coefficient of determination. Now we've already calculated r squared. We saw how to do it on a chart. We also, when we calculated coefficient of correlation, when we squared that, we got this measure here. But we want to do this longhand to kind of get understand the meaning of it and why it kind of makes sense. Now this is a chart that we've plotted back through the last couple videos our individual data points. This is that same data set we've been working with. Temperature uh, as our x value. Sales of chicken soup at a particular grocery store. We have taken this sample. Those are our data points, so we plotted them. We have an x bar line, a y bar line plotted. Right, That helped us figure out coefficient of correlation. We then using add trend line had this line here. Now, if we're trying to figure out a goodness of fit, how, how well does this line fit for the purpose of estimating things with the actual observed values? Well, imagine if all of these markers were exactly on the line. Then the model, the regression line, would fit perfectly. The goodness of fit would be perfect in our measure, that would mean we would get a 1. But look what happens here. All of these points are not exactly on the line. Now we want to distinguish between the total variation, that's from the y bar line up to the particular observed value, and then break it up into two parts. This part, this y bar, and I've calculated down here the average for the y values, average for the x values, Went ahead, like we learned in the last video, the slope, y's and x's from our observed values. And there's our slope of the line. And there's our y-intercept using the intercept function. All right, but this y bar, well, before we even started talking about linear or simple linear regression, we had y bar as a measure. It's an estimated value that we use sometimes to make prediction, right? It's the one value that stood in for all the values. So you could use it to predict. But now with now that we've learned how to do this simple linear regression line and calculate the slope and intercept, now we have a model, right? And so last video, we, we created this model and then used it to predict. So given some temperature, we were able to estimate temperature x. We were able to estimate sales of chicken soup. Well, this is the y bar. So the distance between what we might use for predicting and this data point is the total variation. But notice that total variation can be broken down into two parts. The part that the model explains, because remember, this is total variation. So in some ways, that this model explains that much of the total variation. But this little extra part here is called a residual or an error. Again, the idea is if they were all on the line, the model would be perfect, but they're not. So these are like the extra little errors. So of the total va uh, um, variation, our model explains this much. This little bit right there is the error. Now let's go over and look at our formulas. And I kind of have a legend up here to explain the different parts of uh, this chart here. Here's how we're going to calculate what's called the sum of the squares due to error. That's all of these little parts right here. We're going to take the particular y, that means for observed y, and subtract the predicted y. And look at that. There, right there, is the observed y. If that point right on the line is predicted, then when you subtract them, you get that distance. 
So then we're going to take all of those, square each one of them, and add them. That's going to be called what's called the sum of the square due to error. Down here, sum of squares due to regression, that relates to that little orange part. So what do we do here? We take the predicted value minus y bar. So that, if we could point exactly that predicted value on the line and subtract y bar, that would give us that distance right there. This SSR, sum of the squares of regression, is, the, is it also called the explained part of total variation because our model here explains that much, but not this extra little error, right? SSE, SSR. Well, as you can imagine, visually when you add these together, what do you get? Total variation. That total variation is the purple line. That's going to be represented down here. Sum, a total, what they call total sum of squares, all the deviations from the mean. When we add SSR and SSE, we will get SST. Now technically here's how to calculate SST. Visually it's easy to see. You calculate the two parts, add them together, you get the total. But here we're going to take our particular Y, oh that's way up here, and subtract the Y bar. So this minus Y bar would give us the entire variation, meaning the, the, the distance from Y bar up to the particular Y. All right, now what's so important about this? This relationship right here is what's so important because let's think about SSE. What if all of these markers were all on the line? Then what would the blue what would the distance for the blue line here be and here and here and here, right? All the ones below have a line going up like that. That all be zero. So what does that mean? If this was zero, then these two things would be equal. And so we take this one step further doing division. This is all of the variation, sum of the squares of the total deviation from the mean. If we take our SSR and divide it by this, if SSE is 0, then this equals perfect prediction. All the markers are on our estimated line. right? So our measure called coefficient of determination is going to be SSR divided by SST. The closer it is to 1, the, be the better the goodness of fit. All right. Uh, we also saw earlier how if we take correlation and square it, we get what's called R squared. That's going to be exactly equal to this. Why are we doing it longhand here? Because it helps to see visually the idea behind this goodness of fit R squared or coefficient of determination. All right, let's go ahead and do our calculations. All right, so we went ahead and calculated slope and intercept. We first need to get all of our predicted values. So I'm going to take predicted value. I'm going to take y-intercept, and I'm going to lock it with the F4 key, plus slope. I have to lock that with the F4 key times my particular my observed x. Control enter. Now we're allowed to compare the predicted y to the actual observed y. And I'm going to copy this down. Immediately going to point to fill without formatting. Because I want to keep that format. I want to mark this. This is that one that we see on the chart right there. This is um, our predicted y. Now we can calculate our residual. The residual relates to that blue part. What's the distance from predicted all the way up to actual observed? So we take observed minus predicted. It's called the residual. I'm going to I'm going to apply general. I don't want that. Uh, uh, currency format, so I'm going to apply general. Uh, you can format it however you want. The formula is taking the <laughs> formatting from there, and I didn't want it. All right, so now I'm going to copy this down and immediately point to fill without formatting because I want to keep that formatting. All right, that's just the individual residual. So if we were to take that amount there, 1,500, about 87 bucks, that's the distance right there. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, that's the distance right there. Uh, this distance for observation number one. I think that's our, is that, 
pretty sure, yeah. If you hover your cursor, you can see 48,900 or 86, do we? That would be hard. It's like right, right there. 86,330. So the distance between that one and the line is that amount right there, our residual. All right, so now, in order to calculate SSE, some of the squares of the errors or the residuals, I'm just going to take the residual I just calculated, or the error, and square it. Control-Enter, and copy it down. Fill without formatting. All right, now the sum of that, all of these values right here, will give us what's called SSE, alt equals. Predicted. Residual, residual squared, add them all up. And that's this right here. Particular value minus our predicted value squared, add them all up. All right, now let's calculate SSR. That is the distance right there, if we take all those distance and square them. Now, I'm gonna, I did this in two steps just to show you the uh, residual there. So in essence, we're going to take all of those distance and square them. So I'm going to take the actual predicted value equals open parentheses, predicted value minus the y bar, which I already calculated. And I'm going to F4 to lock that. So the predicted, right, that's the uh, number on the line. The y bar, that's going to be that. Close parentheses, shift 6 to get our exponent 2. Control Enter. Copy it down and point to fill without formatting. Now I'm going to add all those up. Sum. So I'm going to sum G22 to G36. All right, so that's SSR. Whoops. Look at that number. That wasn't supposed to be there. All right, now when we add these together, we're going to get what's called SST, total sum of the squares, the actual square deviations. We'll do it longhand in just a moment. But we want to see that when you add these two things together, boom, you get SST. So equals that plus that. OK, in our formulas over here, we just calculated SSE. And then we skipped down and calculated SSR and then used this relationship right here to determine SST. Now let's uh, do it the second way, because really, when we calculated and through our last couple of videos, uh, we actually made this calculation We, when we did standard deviation, for example. All right, so the actual Y, each individual Y minus the Y bar. That's the full purple line there. And then we square them. All right, so you ready? Equals open parentheses, the observed y minus our y bar, f4 to lock it, close parentheses, shift 6, 2. So we're going to square it. Control Enter. I'm going to copy it down. Point to fill without formatting. I love that. That came in in Excel 2002. You used to always wreck your formatting. That was so, but now there's that great little smart tag. All right, now we add this up, Alt equals. And we have the same two values. All right, so the idea is if SSE, the errors, that's all of these distances here, if they were all, the points were all on the line, this would be 0, right? So then there'd be no error. When we divided SSR by SST, it would be 1, the number 1, perfect. All the observed values are exactly on our regressed line. So now we're this is our measure. This is our what's called a coefficient of determination, or r squared, or measure of goodness of fit. Equals SSR divided by SST, and boom, we get 0.719. When we did it uh, using add trend line and then show r squared, we got that. We could also check it. Remember, we have an r squared function. So r squared, we're just doing this to make the connection to what we did before. Really, the whole meaning of this is to see how it's calculated. And hopefully, it makes 
a little bit of sense. But we can use, once you get it, right, then you just use the function. So we'll use r squared. We got our y's and our x's. So we get it there. We also will want to remind ourselves the coefficient of correlation. That tells us strength and direction of the line. We use Pearson for that. Pearson function, we get our y's and our x's. Pearson is, I'm sorry, a coefficient of correlation is going to give us a number between negative 1 and 1. Negative 1 means we know that it is close to negative 1. It means it's inverse or negative relationship. Close to 1 means strong, direct, positive relationship. So this measure will vary from minus 1 to 1. R squared is going to always vary from 0 to 1. How do we do it? We can get it directly from co correlation. We take the r and square it. That's where I got the name r squared, right? All right, so that's one, two, three different ways that we calculated our coefficient of determination. Now, one way to think of this is that the goodness of fit coefficient of determination is the proportion of the variability in the dependent variable y that is explained by the estimated regression equation. So if you look up here, right, there's the total variation. There's the explained part, the unexplained part, right? Our model took us from down here up to here, a better predictor um, than just using the y bar. So it's really a proportion, right, because that purple line, again, these are the lines. We square them in our calculations. But you can think of it as that's the total uh, variation. That little orange line represents the distance from the predicted value to y bar. So when you do that division of all the squared values, you get a proportion. Total variation, the line explains that much. Goodness of fit. Um, let's do one more example down here. This is the same second example we've been doing throughout these re uh, linear regression videos. This is our data points temperature. And instead of plotting chicken soup, we plotted sales of ice cream. So we have our particular values. And there's our estimated line. So when we do r squared, and I'll just use the r squared function, rsq, known y's, comma, and known x's. And there we have it, 0 0.90. That's a pretty good fit. That means our, the closer these are, to the line, the better the fit, the better our coefficient of determination, the closer the coefficient of determination is to 1. So the fact that it's 0.9, pretty darn good. All right, uh, in this video, we saw how to do coefficient of determination using SSR divided by SST. All right, we'll see you next video.